This is Julian and I'm here in Berlin, Germany. And what we're gonna jump into in this video here is a segment from last night's live event where I share some of the darker times that I went through when I first moved to Los Angeles. You know, people tend to think that everything was very smooth, it just naturally happened, when in fact there were some really, really rough times that I went through and I want to share with you the mindset that I took on, the life view that I took on, that I still take on to this day, which have helped me plow through those darker times, which is make your life like a fucking movie. I want to experience the highest highs, the lowest lows. I want to experience everything. And um, apart from service, that's what really drives me too. It's like, let's fucking see, you know? Um, that's why, to, to be honest, I even moved to LA. I was just like, fuck, let's see. Like I was stuck in my, my, my routine. I didn't like what I was doing, what I was studying and shit. And uh, when I moved, this is like, fuck, 11 years. No, this is nine years ago now. Nine years ago when I moved to LA. Um, quit university and just bounce there. No plan at all, no plan. All I knew is what I was doing in Switzerland was not congruent to me. I hated it and I felt dead inside and I was hating life. I was living a life trying to escape it, nonstop. And uh, it was so fucking scary moving to LA. But the one thing, and it sounds super cliche, that gave me the last 1% that allowed me to move was watching this movie Into the Wild. Um, it's based on a book, great book, and the movie's really good too, where the guy literally just quits his life and just walks out in, into the wild. Um, watch the movie, not to spoil it, he dies at the end, but <laughs> still watch the movie. Uh, but um, that there, I'm like, for me, it was like the biggest epiphany because I was like, I can just walk away. And it sounds so obvious, but it's true. It's like, I can walk away from this. If you don't like your life right now, if it's deeper issues, and that's the reason you don't like your life, you're just gonna recreate the same uh, circumstances somewhere else, so you gotta dive deeper. But in terms of the external, you can walk away. And you're like, huh. You know, I hear everyone bitch so much about their jobs all the time, it's like, quit. Why don't you quit? You can quit, you're allowed to quit. I hate where I live, I hate my friends. Make new friends. You don't like where you live, move. You know, you'll have to go through a phase of like discomfort, yes. You know, when I moved to LA, it was a lot of discomfort, like staying in the, the sketchiest places ever, dude. Like places with like cockroaches everywhere. Um, but oh, there's another one that made it epic. Like the fucked up situations, those are my most epic stories. Like I slept for a while in this basement um, where there was cockroaches everywhere, everywhere. Like I would leave my computer on at night and I'd wake up and there'd be baby cockroaches coming out of the little USB ports and shit. I would wake up with cockroaches on me, on the sheets, in the covers, crawling up my legs, everywhere. I had to wear earplugs because I was paranoid they'd go in my ears. Um, that's where I stayed, you know? Super fucked, but there's an epic story right there. You know, so you go through that discomfort, you may have to, but at the same time, now your life's interesting. Now you're pursuing something that is more congruent to you, and that's really what life is about. Like, there is no destination. All that matters is that you align with that congruent path. And um, yeah, I mean, you just realize, like, all those limitations are just really in your head. And now you might be fearing it too, like, well, what if I quit my job? Write down the worst case scenario. What is the worst, absolute worst case scenario? Are you really gonna go homeless and die if you quit your job? No. If all goes to shit, and say you lose all your money and you're on the verge of being homeless, I am sure you can always go back to some people and either your family or some friends, live with them a bit, and then go back to whatever you're doing now. This is your comfort zone. You can create it again. But then we don't take risks. You know? So for me, it was always like, stay congruent and then just make it epic. Make it like a movie. It's like, I'm not gonna wait for it to happen. I'm gonna go create it and an epic movie has really like high highs and really low lows. You wanna make it epic, you gotta go through the contrast. Don't resist the contrast. 
Because in the end, like, that's really all you have, too, if you look back, it's your experiences. You know? Even in terms of, like, say, say guys who always, like, success with women, it's like, I just want to get the girl, get the girl. It's like, okay, that's cool, but, like, what you're left with at the end, if I look back at the girls I've been with and interacted with, what stands out is not the result of getting the girl, it's the whole experience of meeting her and the roller coaster leading up to that. That's what I remember. You know, people are like, I just want to sleep with the girl. You know, it's, it's not like the act of sex that just is, is the glory. It's the, the whole experience, the roller coaster of going out, who's this new person, the ups and downs. The same as life. It's not about making it. It's what's the story? What's the journey up until then? You know? And um, yeah, it's crazy. Like, you're not as trapped as you are, and there are so many safety nets. It's really, really hard if you're in this room here right now to fall all the way down to homelessness and death. Like, it's really fucking hard. And when you get so low, you'll be surprised by how turn, like, activated your mind gets and how you'll easily find a way back. When necessity kicks in, you'll find a way back. You know? So try shit out. Take risks. And don't buy into the conditioning that it's not safe and shit. Like, the biggest risk of all is living a life that's not congruent to you. That's the risk. Then you're just dying. You're drifting through life till death. You're already dead. You're alive, but you're dead inside. You didn't live. But that's my take. That's me. And so far, my movie's been quite epic. For real. I never, ever thought I could have created such an epic movie of a life. I wouldn't change anything. And if you think about it, it's like it's the type of life, being very modest, you could write a book of, about. Being modest in my life is so, this is, so, this is the most obnoxious seminar. My life is so interesting and so epic, you can make a fucking actual movie about it. Hey, so seek that out. Instead of seeking approval or seeking all shit, like seek out a great movie. How are you gonna live your life so when you're on your deathbed, you're like, that was the best movie I ever saw in my, ever. I would watch that movie nonstop. You're the director, you're the actor, make it happen. You're the script writer, yeah. What's a difficult decision? For example, to move to another country or to uh, choose your career? Well, just realize, like, I would reflect on what a, uh, like, I kid you not, that question, what is a difficult decision? I would reflect on that. Like, what is a difficult decision? Kind of similar to you with, like, the risk. It's like, what is, you know, something that's at risk? Like, say I move to L.A. and say it all fucks up. Like, in my mind, I was like, my life is over if it fucks up. But is that true? No, I can always go back to Switzerland. You know? Um, if you pick the wrong career, guess what? You can always quit and pick the right one. You don't go backwards, you grow. That adds to the movie as well. If you literally take this frame like, it's a movie, it's a movie, the wrong career is great. It's like the superhero in the beginning working at the pizza store and then a spider bites him. And then you found his right career, Spider-Man. You know, you don't want to see Spider-Man already being Spider-Man. You want to see him at the shitty job first. So the wrong career could be the shitty job, could be the beginning of the movie before you find the right career. The same me with, with uh, Switzerland University. Hated it at the time, but now it's part of the movie. So just view it like that. It's like, there's, you can always go back on all these decisions. Nothing's all set in stone. Most of the time, and there are some, but those are like very few. Most decisions, you can just change it. But we fear it. Go try shit out. Wing it. You know? And then be surprised by what happens. I wing so much of my life. <laughs> you know? If you're like, what's your plan? I'm like, fuck, should I know? To be honest, I really have no fucking idea. Like, where do you see yourself in 10 years? <laughs> I'm winging it. I'm writing the movie. I'm watching it as I write it. I have a general direction, but I can pivot very fast. If this movie gets boring, I'll change the fucking script. I'll change it real fast. You know? Maybe in a fucking few years, I'm like, you know what? Fuck all this shit. I'm going to be a stripper. <laughs> very fast, I'll change to be a stripper. And you'll see me on a fucking pole somewhere in a bar. <laughs> Maybe after a while, I'll be like, fuck this stripper shit. I'm be a, you know, work at an office for a bit. Go back to Starbucks. 
live a life of experiences. You know, and then um, you also realize, like, with the conditioning, we think we need so much. I will never diss material things, but we think we need way more than we actually do need. You know, to live a comfortable life, you don't need that much money. To live a life of experiences, you don't need that much money. I had the craziest experiences being broke as fuck. Once being broke, homeless, and owning nothing. I went through that, and that was fucking scary, but also crazy. You know, like sleeping in my car because I had nowhere to live and no money and no job. Nothing. First place I lived at, I crashed. I was paying 500 a month um, to crash in this guy's living room in a one-bedroom apartment to crash in the living room of this 50-something-year-old gay guy. Um, <laughs> why are you saying shit? He was a great guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was. Um, well, he wasn't, but not because of the fact that he's gay. But, but he was a cunt. Um, he was not great. No, he was great at first. Moved in because he got me on my feet. But then he was like, you know what? Other people are moving in. And then I was, some other guy moved in. And I was like, I'm moving out. But I had to give a 30-day notice. So the last 30 days, I was stuck in the living room on a blow-up mattress on the floor next to <laughs> this huge Bulgarian bodybuilder guy. Huge, fucking huge guy who's also sleeping on a blow-up mattress. Like this fucking far from me in this little apartment living room. And then he got some other guy in at the end, so it was like three of us in this living room. Then he died, but then we revived him. It, it, for real, it was, we had to call ambulances and shit because he overdosed on his medication. Uh, he was purple. There was all this fucked up shit. And then after that, I was gonna move out and my whole plan was I'm gonna be homeless. So I had a car, I saved up and I bought a car and I had no more money. And I was shaved my hair off because I was like, I'm gonna go to my coffee shop job and then I eventually also got a um, clothing shop, like just selling clothes. Um, I'm gonna go to my job and then just sleep in my car and every once in a while I'm gonna drive out to the beach and just shower at one of the free shitty showers on the beach. Now because I can't shower daily, my hair is gonna look like shit and stink, so I'm gonna shave it off. So I shaved off all my hair and I literally planned on just being full homeless in the car. And then after a couple of days of that, I'm like, fuck this. Sold the car, moved in with another gay guy. Um, and this guy would literally bring guys over daily, if not twice a day. So I was in the living room as well. And the soundtrack nonstop were guys fucking. I kid you not, guys fucking nonstop. He was really cool. Like We got really close, but it was just nonstop guy fucking. And uh, that's where I lived for a good six to eight months, I would say. Um, yeah, no, it was, uh, oh, I, I, that's also when I met Owen, like, o Owen came over one day and shit, it's like, this is where I live. Um, who knows, in that bathroom, like, there was cum everywhere, I don't know who, it's probably a bunch of guys just mixed in together just over the years. Um, but yeah, I lived there, and then after that, um, I moved in with a girl, left all my stuff there, and just quit my job and bounced and traveled for like a month. And when I came back, she was like, uh, I've rethought things, we're not together anymore. So then I had like no more money spent, because I spent it all, no house, no apartment, no job, and then I was full fucking homeless. And I remember spending that night in my car, like in this garage, and I was just sleeping there, and I was like, I am so fucked. Like nothing, no job, nothing. And then I went to stay with a first friend, which was the cockroach apartment, and then I got really fucking sick there too, probably from sleeping in the car with the cold and shit. And I had this cough for like two months and a half, like severe cough to the point where I literally thought something was really bad, but I had no money to even go to a doctor. And I had no life insurance or health insurance. I was like fucked. And it got so bad to the point where I had to wait sitting up until I was so fucking tired that if I lied down, I would fall asleep within a few seconds or I would lie down and I'd start coughing and I couldn't sleep. So I'd be staying up on my computer and I remember there was the cockroaches and shit everywhere like while I'm typing, like you give up after a while because there's so many of them. And uh, it's like tears in my eyes because I'm so tired and still coughing and shit. And I'm like, be more tired. And then like finally fucking pass out and I wake up with more cockroaches. It was horrible. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then from there, um, then I moved in with uh, Owen, actually, for a bit. Lived with him. Got his kid sick, his baby sick at the time. His <laughs> girlfriend sick at the time, because I was so sick. 
I was literally like a bum. Like I, I stank, I looked like shit, I was sick, I was all inflated, like just my face was puffy. It was fucked, man. And uh, then from there I started slowly inching my way up. Um, start, went to get my, a, a job at a selling cars. Or I went to this place, uh, Honda, like a used car place, like super sketchy people. And I lied on my resume saying I finished university, which I didn't. And then I went there and all I said on the interview was, why do you want to work here? And I'm like, money. <laughs> okay, does anything motivate you? Money. Anything else? Money. You're hired, sir. <laughs> like, that was it. And that was, um, that was really hell. It was like everyone's trying to fuck over everyone else. And I was slowly making some money again, but living at Owen's place. Then I got into, well, I was helping him out at the time too. Then I got into internet marketing with a friend of mine. And that allowed me to quit the Honda job. And then from there, paid by RSD, travel with RSD, and things exploded. But it was a good, quite some time of hell. Um, during that time in America as well, I'd come back to Switzerland during the summer. I came back once to do the summer job I did um, in between uh, high school and university, where I worked on this garbage truck for a while. So I did that because it would pay more in Switzerland to then go back to LA. But it was, a, it was a fucking grind, and you're like right on the bottom of like homeless, almost homeless, not homeless, almost homeless, not homeless, no plan for the future. Um, but I loved it. Oh, and not just that, but then family pressure, like family hates you, disown. It's like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Um, and then massive uncertainty about the future because you're like, okay, I'm almost homeless and not. At this point in my life, there's no stay, stability. I can't really even have a relationship the last, like, where there's long-term hope. I can't have kids, I can't have this, I can't have that. It's like just full fucking chaos. Um, but yeah, but, but the, the moral is I loved every fucking second of it. And that is also the pact you kind of have to make with yourself and the pact that you can only make if you're doing something that's congruent, where for me it was like, I would be okay staying in that grind for fucking ever because it was this calling, it was something like I was compelled to do. Like that for me was living. And those worst days, almost homeless, puffy, coughing, crying and shit, beat any day um, in Switzerland doing the, the, the thing I fucking just didn't like at all. Even though it was like socially more comfortable, I felt way more dead inside. Here I felt fucking alive. And I'd be fine remaining homeless, I'd be fine not having enough money to ever have a family or kids, anything, because without that foundation of following that calling that's you, you're already dead. For real, me doing that shit that's not congruent to me, you're dead. Like, that is not a life. Like, if you're not doing something that's congruent to you, everything you're doing is just trying to escape the shit that it is to be alive. So I'm like, fuck, I'd rather be homeless and do something that, that calling, because then it's like you're living. Like, your worst day on your true purpose will beat any day um, off your purpose. You know? And I love those days, and people think it's, obnoxious to say, or like, it's not true, he's just saying that, but it's true. I loved that day on my computer with the cockroaches crying, waiting to be so tired to fall asleep, as much as my highest high in terms of success now. I love it just as much as me speaking right now. And it's just as important of a part of the story or the movie of my life than this moment right now here. If not even a more memorable moment. I'll remember that moment like on my fucking deathbed. Will I remember this seminar? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe it'll just blend into all the seminars. You know? But uh, yeah, that's one where it's like on my deathbed. You'll always have a certain calling, but it'll also kind of change too. So, and if you don't change, like the, the universe will kind of help you change. So for me, for example, after the scandal, you know, I, I learned so much and realized so much about myself. Like, that's what was inspiring me. That's what would maybe then create Transformation Mastery and then tour with it. But it's something I knew, like, this is the path now. And similar to me moving to LA, like this is the path, um, there was massive uncertainty and massive resistance from everyone. You know, you're, you're here now, and you know, Transformation Mastery is huge. Like, people love it, people love the Julian himself channel, I hope, um, but back then, people hated that. When I started that Julian himself channel, Everyone hated it, even close friends, um, fans, so much hate. It's like, go back to pick up, what is this shit, what is this shit? 
And it's tempting, too, because even if you think about the self-help, like now it's big, but back then, the easy bet in terms of like a business perspective would be to just make another fucking dating program. Why risk, like you have this massive audience of people who love you for your dating shit. Now you have even a bigger brand with the scandal for the dating shit. Make a dating program. But it just wasn't that calling. And I'm like, no, instead of making a fucking program, I'm just gonna put videos out in terms of what I'm passionate about, what I love, the self-help stuff, for two fucking years. No programs, two years, just putting the self-help shit out and receiving hate, tons of comments saying I'm a pussy, tons of comments saying it's like Jordan playing basketball, so on and so forth. But even then, that felt better than succeeding in the external doing something that was no longer that calling, you know? And I enjoyed those moments just as much as now with the success. It's like all that matters is that you align with it. That's really all that matters. Success after that is just, it'll come, it'll go. It's all subjective anyway. You know, it's like, what is success anyway? You can always get more. And if you're not, it generally just adds to the movie. Just align, 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 act from there. We have two purposes in life. The first, as I call it, is to realize abundance. So to let go and re-own yourself. And then from there, you have a second purpose because you're still alive and you're still in this world and that is to act from inspiration and take action in this world, okay? And then that will manifest in various ways depending on who you are. Um, some other ways you could think about this for now is um, what's the thing, I like this expression so I'll use it, what's the thing in life that really tickles your balls, that turns you on? The thing where it doesn't matter how much money you make, it doesn't matter if you ever succeed, it's the time where you felt the most alive. If you died now, what was the thing you did alive while you were alive that turned you on the most? You know, and, and it, might, it might not be something you've done for like years. Maybe the past 10, 20 fucking years you've been dead inside. And all you can remember is a moment during your childhood. What was that? Rekindle that. If that's, like it's crazy. If that was the moment you felt the most alive during your childhood, what have you been doing the past 10, 20 years? You're fucking up. You're, you're dead inside. Like, What's life? Is that life if you felt the most alive only as a kid? No? If that's your realization here, switch shit up big time nowadays. Don't keep doing what you're doing. Go back to doing what you were as a kid. If that's what made you happy, if you died right now and your happiest moments were as a kid, change something. For real. Otherwise, it's all downhill. And it's scary, but it's like kind of reflect like, Okay, it's scary. It might go against the, the opinions of other people and shit, but at the same time, it's like, your life's yours, you're gonna die. Milk the experience that is being alive. You don't have forever. We think we do. I'll do it someday. There is, what if there is no someday? It's not a guarantee. That's the other thing. It's like, I love this, um, this saying, because it's so true. It's like, what would you do if you had a disease right now that'll kill you? Um, it could kill you, like say you go to the doctor. It's like, sir, what's your name? Nikita, you have cancer. I'm sorry to tell you you have cancer. We can't heal you. Um, but we can't give you a definitive timeline. You might die tomorrow. You might die in 40 years. You might die in 50 years. But you do have cancer and you will die. Would your perception change? If the answer is yes, then realize this. You all have cancer right now. It's called being alive. It's gonna kill you. Being alive is going to kill you. Being alive, no one survives being alive. You all die. We fight so hard to survive, none of us survive. You can't survive, you're gonna die. From that perspective, and knowing that when you die, it's like, that's your life, it's you, it's your responsibility, like how are you gonna live it? So when you die, you're like, fuck yeah. You know, I lived life my way, I lived life, you know, on my terms, I lived a life that I milk this experience of being alive, whatever that is to you, whatever that means to you. How would you do it then? Versus, I wasted this chance, I wasted this opportunity, I should have done more, I should have gave myself permission to do this, to feel this, to think this. Say you take a risk now, and say you're older, and say you want to start a family or get established, you're definitely risking that. However, similar to me back in university, the question is, what's a greater risk? Would you rather, it's a would you rather. Would you rather follow your calling and perhaps never have a family, never settle down, 
Or would you rather not follow your calling, live something that's perhaps a little incongruent to you, and have a family and settle down? That's the question. For me, it's calling above all else, because otherwise I'm not living. And I wouldn't even be able to enjoy the family or the settling down, and part of me would probably resent them, because I would start blaming the family and the settling down from blocking me from pursuing my purpose. That is the, the goal. It's just being connected to that. Where where's the impatience come from? Like, how can it get better than this? You're pursuing your dream. How does it get better? Oh, I, I make more money. Cool, but you're still pursuing your dream. As long as you're pursuing the dream, you've made it. That's the goal. This is Julian, and welcome to Transformation Master. It was fucking amazing. This was huge for me. This was so, so important. This gave me by far the greatest epiphanies I've ever had. It just made me finally confront my deepest fears. And we got like real deep and I found some issues within myself. One of the best things I've seen so far in my life. What you're about to experience going through this program is what completely changed my life on every single level. Okay, be it health, wealth, relationships, higher purpose, you name it, this is the stuff that finally, finally produced that true, long-lasting personal transformation we're all after.